Hello, and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be discussing American Income Life, an MLM. Now, already from the title alone, this particular MLM worries me a bit. Plenty of multi-level marketing companies such as Herbalife are known for targeting immigrants that are seeking a better life for themselves by attempting to help them chase the American dream. So with that being the baseline for what we're gonna be taking a look at today, let's jump right in and explore the MLM American Income Life. Now, when we begin with the history with a cursory search of American income life, it already proves to be pretty interesting. The top results are articles that call it a scam, saying, please don't get suckered into this. It's deceptive, it's crooked, you name it. And if those are the top search results when you're looking up a company, well, you know this is gonna be one hell of an episode and not the Lil Nas type of hell. Now, before I do get into the episode, I wanna make it clear that American Income Life Insurance Company and National Income Life Insurance Company are just about the same thing. If you've heard of one, but not the other, now you know. They're pretty much identical. The websites are pretty much the same, except for the name change. It's a little freaky, honestly. On the American Income Life Insurance website, this is how their About Us page reads. American Income Life is an international company protecting working families in the United States, Canada, New Zealand, and through our wholly owned subsidiary, National Income Life Insurance Company in New York. I guess New York gets an entire branch of this MLM to itself, so sorry, New York. But anyway, although we'll switch between American income and national income in wording sometimes, I just wanted to make the distinction clear. And as an additional side note, we've got Globe Life as their parent company. So a lot of clone looking websites here. So who exactly are they all? Well, American Income says that they've served working class families since 1951 with life, accident and supplemental health products. And yep, that's the actual wording on their website too. And I don't know why it made me chuckle a bit, but I just, I think it might be because the phrasing makes it sound like they're providing people with life accidents and then they also sell supplements as opposed to providing insurance in those three areas. But let's just move on though. This American income saga was all started by a man named Bernard Rappaport. Bernard had a pretty difficult life growing up as he was born in 1917 and his family struggled a lot during the Great Depression as many did during that time. His parents peddled blankets from a push cart in San Antonio trying to make ends meet, but they were evicted. It's said that one event when he was 13 years old really shaped the man he would later become. As one source explains, as he rushed home from Yom Kippur services, he was hit by a car. The accident forced him to be bedridden for a year and a half and left him with a permanent limp. As a diversion, he read many books while he recuperated, perhaps one of the reasons he is such a proponent of reading programs to this day. As if poverty and disability were not enough, Bernard would come to learn firsthand about social injustice. Growing up in an era of anti-Semitic and anti-Black bigotry provided its own lessons in overcoming prejudice. He learned what it was like to be a second-class citizen and learned tolerance from his father, who often rode with Blacks at the back of the bus in support. These formative years shaped and formed what would later become the undergirding of the Rappaport Foundation, a pursuit of social justice and equality, a desire to help the disadvantaged and underserved a love of reading and music, and a will to provide children with an education and its resulting potential. And honestly, these are some fantastic beginnings, and I don't want to diminish what Bernard started here. The Rappaport Foundation does seem to have some incredible messaging behind it, and I think Bernard's morals growing up are commendable to say the least. Hell, it's not only the good thing he's done either. According to yet another source, Rappaport's time at University of Texas greatly influenced his success in life and his pride in his alma mater resulted in both financial and service contributions to the university. In 1991, Ann Richards appointed Rappaport to the UT System Board of Regents, on which he served as chairman from 1993 until his retirement from the board in 1997. During his tenure, the board approved the South Texas Border Initiative to increase access to higher education in South Texas. The purchasing power of the Permanent University Fund increased and the university created the UT Investment Management Company. 
Rappaport also established or contributed to numerous endowments for scholarships and chairs in economics and the liberal arts and funding the Blandin Museum of Art and the Bernard and Audrey Rappaport Center for Human Rights and Justice. Named in recognition of the couple, the Bernard and Audrey Rappaport Building on the UT Austin campus houses the College of Liberal Arts. So credit where credit is due, Bernard sounded like he truly wanted to help others and he went the extra mile to do exactly that. But how do we get from this to selling insurance? Well, it's sort of a strange position to be in where I truly admire how much Bernard advocated for the arts and social justice, but I think he made one key mistake. By all accounts, he firmly believed in the freedom of speech and the freedom of the press. He cared about equality. So I really don't have anything against him personally, at least on that level. In many ways, he reminds me of the founder of Color Street, another multi-level marketing company. Both of them immigrated to the US, struggled for many years, but made millions and seemed to remain humble through it all. It's so unfortunate that the companies sort of left in his wake leave much to be desired when his legacy seems anything but. As for American income itself, well, Bernard got his start by selling Pioneer American Insurance. He opened up his own Pioneer Insurance branch before opening his own insurance MLM, American Income. One source states, Bernard Rappaport rose from general agent in the Pioneer American Life Insurance Company to fill executive roles in the American Income Life Insurance Company and a political activist. I really want to believe that Bernard simply didn't see the problem with being in an MLM at the time. After all, if he did well enough to open his own branch at Pioneer, then he probably saw that MLM as a way of getting out of poverty and as a hun would probably call it, a fantastic opportunity. Bernard doesn't come across as a scammer or a slime ball like frankly, I expected him to. It seems like he might've thought, hey, this business model worked for me, so I'll adopt it myself. I'm not saying that's an excuse. Bernard absolutely should have done more research and looked into how MLMs take advantage of people. But at that time in the mid 1900s, I'm also not sure that information readily was available. According to my source, in 1951, Rappaport and his wife's uncle, Harold Goodman, founded the American Income Life Insurance Company with $25,000 in Indianapolis, moving the headquarters to Waco in 1958. Under Rappaport's leadership, the company spread into labor union and credit union markets and became one of the first union label insurance companies. In 1994, the insurance and financial services holding company Torchmark Corporation purchased AIL for $563 million. Torchmark Corporation changed its name to Globe Life in 2019, which as we stated earlier, is the parent company of American Income. Maybe they changed their name to escape a checkered past, but you know, we'll get there in just a moment. By 1963, American Income's income was between six and $7 million. In another 10 years, it was 31.5 million. In the 80s, Bernard was named Fortune Magazine's 40 most generous Americans. And in 94, as we said, Torchmark took over. I obviously never met Bernard. I can't say for sure he was a fantastic person. I just wonder how legitimate and wonderful this company can be when it operates under this business model. Spoiler alert, it's not super reputable at all. I wish Bernard had started a genuine life insurance business because he sounds like the kind of person that could have made it fantastic and everything it needs to be and everything that follows in his own beliefs. He seems to care about people. He knew what it was like to go through a traumatic experience where insurance could have helped. His insurance might've been fantastic, but we just will never know because unfortunately American income is what he gave us and it just, well, it isn't it. Now, before we discuss what makes them infamous, let's get into the products. They offer life insurance, as we said, and explain on their website how this would help someone looking to help their family if they pass away unexpectedly. I assume most of you listening to this understand how life insurance works, so let's just kind of keep things moving. In order to see how much this would cost, you would have to find an agent. I found a random one in Colorado and it led me to the distributor website. And already there were quite a few red flags as I immediately started to glance through. Uh, First and foremost, the agent's website doesn't say, hey, I'm here to help you buy insurance or whatever you might expect. Instead, the blurb underneath this agent's name is this. American Income Life Insurance Company is all about opportunity unlimited. Opportunity unlimited means there are no limits to how much you can earn, how far you can advance in your career, or how many people's lives you can help protect. As an independent contractor, you are in control of your financial worth and leadership performance. 
If you're looking for a flexible career opportunity where you can help change the lives of others, take a closer look at American Income Life. Beneath this agent's name, there's also the words business owner, which is kind of depressing, but let me say this nice and clear. If you are an agent or distributor for a company, you don't own that company. You are not a business owner. Now, don't get me wrong, someone might own their own branch, but ultimately their money is still going to the tippy tippy top and not to them. There's no way to get an online quote from them either, which isn't necessarily a shady thing in of itself, but I could see this going wrong really fast. I remember other insurance MLMs I've discussed asking for your social security number, which they shouldn't really need for a quote. So I wouldn't be surprised if this one asked for that as well. I'm just saying, if someone wanted to be an identity thief, it would be really easy to sign up for this MLM as a distributor, ask for people's socials, and then bail. Their philosophy is also somewhat standard for an insurance company, and it states, we contribute to various organizations that research, analyze, and propose solutions on fair trade, good jobs, environmental sustainability, and electing fair-minded candidates. Publicly, we defend workers' rights, we advocate for financial reform, we champion for a fair economy. Privately, we offer affordable, permanent, portable life insurance. We support independent agents who visit thousands of families a year. Generally, I don't see anything that stands out or separates them from any other insurances I may search. Everyone is going to say they believe in affordable quality care. It's seeing if they put those practices to action that really matters. They do have a qualifier on their product page and that did catch my eye a little bit. Here's what it says. This life insurance does not specifically cover funeral goods or services and may not cover the entire cost of your funeral at the time of your death. The beneficiary of this life insurance may use the proceeds for any purpose unless otherwise directed. I'm sure this is a qualifier that plenty of other companies have, but I made a note of it because, well, I think most people expect life insurance to cover at least the cost of their funeral. And if it doesn't, then what are you paying all that money for, right? I guess it all depends on what policy you've got as any other life insurance website seems to imply. And that's all I've really got for what they sell. It's insurance. I can't look at the ingredients and prices and definitively state whether or not they work. However, what I can do is take a look at some reviews and see what American income insurance holders have to say. It's not hard to find biased reviews about American income. Other insurance MLMs aren't going to have great things to say about them because they're a competitor. I wanted to find as unbiased as a source as I possibly could though, directly from consumers and former agents that were willing to speak out. Although American Income is accredited on BBB, they have an extremely poor rating, only two stars out of over 300 reviews. They've also got almost 300 complaints in the past three years and only 100 have been closed. I understand that some people may not want to withdraw their complaint and you're always going to have a bad customer here or there, but 177 that you can't come to a solution with, that's not a small number. Plus, when you're handling a topic as life-changing and important as insurance, how the company handles things really does matter. I can't say for sure that this is how the company operated when Bernard was in charge, and I don't know if this is how he would handle these matters. At the very least, it's not a good look in the present time. Now, as for those reviews, here's what a few of them had to say. We have had two policies with American Income Life for over 25 years. Each year when they get a new crop of salespeople, they contact us to review our policies and try to sell us something else. They tend to show up at dinner time in the evening and are quite pushy. When we deleted our telephone landline, we gave them a cell phone number and they already have our address. Well, their salesperson never updated our files with the phone number. So for the last six months, they have been Googling our name and address and calling my 85 year old mother-in-law harassing her for our phone number. Not once did they send us anything in the mail to update our information, just continued to call and harass her. Luckily, she will not give out phone numbers to random people. I emailed American Income Life to place my complaint. I gave them a phone number and policy number to contact us. Yet last week, my mother-in-law got two more phone calls. The customer service, or should I say the lack of customer service is unbelievable. If we weren't going to lose so much by trying to cancel our policies, we'd be gone long ago. And let's just be clear here. There is no excuse for that kind of behavior. Calling and harassing an 85 year old woman for a phone number when they've already provided that number to you? What the actual fuck? It just seems especially horrible that they do this to this elderly woman because she isn't even a customer of theirs. Now it's not to say that if you're a customer, you deserve this treatment, but this person isn't even your customer and you're harassing them. That's insanity. Also, and this is pure speculation here, but I've got to question some of the positive reviews that are on BBB as well. 
four or five positive reviews all came in in the same day and they almost say the exact same thing with just slightly different wording, like someone got creative with the thesaurus. On February 18th, four reviews say, the agents are helpful or the business has great opportunities and the agents are passionate and well-educated. There's two or three sentences on each one, nothing more. Whereas just like we saw, these negative reviews go into incredible detail. I'm not going to say that they're definitely fake, but I find it very odd how these positive reviews come in bursts and all at the same time, and they all say the same shit. And this literally happened again in December 5th, 2020 as well. I'm not saying that they're not real. I'm just saying it's really oddly convenient that all the positive reviews say nearly the same thing and all happen on the same day. Now, the negative reviews are far more spread out and use very different language. You know, like they're being written by real people that clearly weren't instructed to say anything in particular, but hey, personal take, feel free to take that one or leave it. Some reviews have said that their information was sold, by the way, which when we get back to the identity theft matter that I just kind of hypothetically proposed earlier, that gets a little more terrifying. Other reviews say that they were not allowed to surrender the policy and got hung up on. It was an unbelievably convoluted process to remove coverage and plenty say they were overcharged by hundreds of dollars. Here's a few more of these brilliantly glowing reviews. I canceled my policy, but they continued to bill me. Slow response to my inquiry. I canceled my policy in September before my billing date. I submitted the form and was told my policy was canceled. I was then billed for September, which I thought was because I canceled that month. I was billed again in October. At this point, they have taken around $150 from my bank account. I emailed two separate people and was told to disregard billing. Yeah, sorry, not going to ignore you taking my money. I emailed screenshots of my cancellation form and the amounts taken from my bank account and I have yet to get a response. American income statement was sent to this person through their email and it says if they wanted to cancel to email them. Nothing was resolved, however, until two months after the complaint was filed. Here's another review. I have asked repeatedly to be taken out of their records and to stop calling me. I'm still being called and harassed. I had this overpriced life insurance back when I worked at Safeway and I didn't know any better. Once I realized how much I was being overcharged, I discontinued coverage and asked to be removed from their records. They keep calling me anyway, using manipulative language to confirm that I want their awful insurance. Starting off with, I'm here to talk to you about your benefits under American Income Life Insurance, insinuating that I have coverage through them. I told him firmly that I asked to be removed from their records a long time ago and to never call me again. So yes, you do not want benefits, sick to death of these scammers. American Income's response was to say, we added your information to the do not call list. Please allow seven business days for this change to take place. Other complaints claim that they aren't even a real insurance company. A representative took four hours at their home and at some point they were pressured into buying a cancer protection policy. There's just an insane amount of red flags here, though these are unfortunately pretty standard red flags when we look at MLMs. To get a better feel for what's happening behind the scenes, I decided to take a look at what agents had to say about the company. After all, as we saw with Kirby Vacuums, an insider's perspective often holds some pretty valuable information. One YouTuber that goes by Bucky Man claims he was promised he'd make six figures within his first year, $100,000 exactly. Bucky says, Honestly, I have experience in sales and I know when someone says you're gonna make such and such amount of money your first year in sales, not to always believe it, but I also know the type of salesperson I am and then my background and my success history and I know that I can sell. And so I knew that I was gonna be able to do this at least from what they were telling me and I was gonna do it well. Bucky was lied to in more ways than one though. He says American income claimed to only sell to unions. That means policemen, firemen, etc. This doesn't seem to be the case, at least not from the reviews I saw and certainly not from what Bucky explains. I don't know if American income lied about selling to unions to simply seem more legitimate, but it's extremely questionable because we're seeing two different things based on the complaints. And again, I could be totally wrong. Maybe every single one of those reviews comes from someone who's in a union, but it just doesn't look that way. Now, I know that people make fun of Hunbots and question, oh, how could you be so stupid to join an MLM and things like that? And to some extent, it's something that I wonder a lot too, is how do you get someone with that mindset that they willingly join one of these things? And I also agree that to an extent, distributors need to do some kind of research before just joining a company and to a degree that that mistake is on them. However, what I found especially important to recognize in Bucky's video and something that he made very clear here is that American Income used very peculiar manipulation tactics. 
Bucky claimed that he was called in for a second interview. He told the man over the phone, I understand the sales industry. I get how it is. I don't need to be promised all these things that don't hold true or only hold true for top producers. Just give me like a ballpark average understanding of what this position is going to be and what I'm looking at as far as pay. He, again, swore up and down, like our our starting agents are making 100,000 a year and you're gonna do great. What makes this so disheartening too is that Bucky apparently told the recruiter that at the time he had a son in NICU or the neonatal intensive care unit and he needed something stable. So this agent knew that Bucky was taking on this job to provide for his sick son and still lied to him. I think that's pretty disgusting. Bucky tried to get his training done as quickly as possible since it was unpaid training, which is a whole different problem in of itself too. And he needed to start earning money as soon as he could because he left his other job for this one. He says that he realized rather quickly that although they did work with union members, the letter was sent to everyone and it was a bait and switch. Information was sent to people asking if they wanted to receive a booklet about Amber Alerts and child safety, but instead when they filled out the information, they'd be signing up for an agent to come sell them insurance. In other words, you take advantage of a parent's concern for their child's safety. Bucky explains that while this isn't his ideal selling situation, he sold for bait and switches before, and he was willing to do this to provide for his own family. Still, American income could have and should have been upfront about something like this. And if I'm not mistaken from my own past in sales, uh, bait and switches are illegal in some states. I I don't know if they're illegal in all states, but I, I do know I believe they're illegal in Colorado. Bucky also shares that three weeks in, after he got told he got the job, the agent simply stopped answering him, ghosted him, and went dark. Bucky claims that he genuinely thought he did his research on this company, but because there wasn't much information about it, he didn't think it was a scam. That's another reason why I wanted to include his story specifically, and why I believe it's so important to even make these types of episodes. Companies like Monet, sure, there's an abundance of information there, and it just seems like it's spilling out wherever you turn. But American income life? like. I never really heard of this company until it was requested of me. And then when I started digging into it, I was like, holy shit, what a hellhole!" But there just doesn't seem that much in general. You really have to dig to start digging up what this company is actually doing behind the scenes. Bucky said that though he saw some bad and good reviews, he thought that perhaps the bad reviews were simply from poor salesmen as that's the nature of the sales business. Nothing jumped out to him saying, hey, this is a scam. Now, again, this is only one man's experience. And if the reviews on Indeed are to say anything, well, it seems to be an unfortunately common one. I can't say for sure if Bucky is lying, but the way this is set up is incredibly reminiscent of other MLMs and a very traditional pattern I think most of us have come to recognize here. We've seen this kind of manipulation and heard this story before. So I am more inclined to believe him than to throw his opinions and his story aside. Already, there is a lot of extremely questionable things about this business, that much is clear. And now it's time to jump in to see what the law says about American income. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor. Unhappy with your smile? You don't have to be. Thousands of people have used Candid, the clear, comfortable, removable, and practically invisible aligners to help straighten your teeth, and now they love their smile. Just like Cameron S. from Nashville, Tennessee, who said, "'Once I started Candid, my life completely changed. I started going to the gym more, started eating better. I even had better dental hygiene. My goal for my wedding was perfect teeth, and Candid got me there. And Candid is here to help straighten your teeth so you can fall in love with your smile again too. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. You'll have the same quality of care you'd get from an in-office orthodontist from the comfort and convenience of your own home. And with Candid, you are not working with a general dentist. Candid only works with orthodontists. And with Candid, the same orthodontist who created your plan is with you from start to finish, so you never have to wonder just how you're doing. And the average Candid treatment is just six months. You'll start seeing results way before then, and it costs thousands of dollars less than traditional braces. So start becoming your better you. Start straightening your teeth today. Right now, you can save $75 on Candid Starter Kit. Go to candidco.com MLM and use code MLM. Take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your first starter kit with Candid. Again, go to candidco.com MLM and use code 
MLM. This episode is also sponsored by Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard of Mint Mobile offering premium wireless services starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service, it all makes a lot more sense. There just isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. So by cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you. And it was really easy to set up Mint Mobile's service. I recently purchased a new phone with them online and I did their unlimited everything plan, which is 30 bucks a month. Like that's the cap guys, 30 bucks a month for everything unlimited. And I got that new Motorola Razr phone, which I'm having such a fun time with. It's not even funny, the retro mode, mm, chef's kiss. But it was so easy. I ordered everything through Mint Mobile and then it came cutely packaged up with all of their product branding and everything with the little fox and all of that to my doorstep within, I think like four days or something. And then all I had to do was plug in the little SIM card at the bottom of the phone. And then I downloaded the Mint Mobile app and then I just typed in like my code information and then that was it. My phone's up and running and it's really good service. And I've taken it up into the mountains where it should be a little spot and it's hanging on pretty well. Like I'm actually shook. And for the record, you don't have to buy a new phone with Mint Mobile. That's just what I did, but you can just take your current phone that you have and transfer it over to Mint Mobile as well. And you can just start using their plans, which again, super easy, delivered right to your door. No crazy hidden fees. It's just easy to use fast service. So if you wanna get started with your new wireless plan today, starting at just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash MLM. Again, that's mintmobile.com slash MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash MLM. Now, continuing on into the episode, we need to discuss the lawsuits. And the lawsuits I want to start with are the ones against Torchmark, the parent company. Namely because I feel that if you have a horrible parent company overseeing your business, well, the business underneath are probably going to follow in those same footsteps and abide by similar rules and guidelines set up by the parent company. I'm not saying this is true in every case, but you know, like we say, the rot starts at the top and works its way down, especially in MLMs, schemes, scams, and you know, all the fun stuff that we cover. One of the first lawsuits I could find before Torchmark became global was between 1995 and 2000, according to my source. This lawsuit began in 1995 as a breach of contract complaint brought by several insurance agents. The agents alleged that their former employers, the defendant insurance companies, conspired to prevent the agents from receiving vested renewal commissions under terms of their contracts, thus allegedly breaching the terms of the contracts as well as violating provisions of the Racketeer Influenced and Corruption Organization Act. It doesn't seem as if the plaintiffs actually won this case. Torchmark was able to defend themselves in court. Perhaps the plaintiffs didn't have enough information. Maybe there wasn't grounds for a lawsuit. I'm not certain, but here's what my source states. Plaintiffs mistakenly presume that the court considered contract claims not an issue in the summary judgment motions to reach its conclusion that defendants were entitled to summary judgment on the ERISA claims. On the contrary, all the court did was use the terms of the contract which the agent signed upon commencing their employment to determine that those contracts evinced an intention to preclude the agents from later claiming that they were entitled to benefits other than those provided for in the contracts. However, this lawsuit also in the mid nineties, Torchmark was sued for fraudulent and misleading sales practices. According to this source, Plaintiffs in the April 22nd action filed in Oklahoma County District Court are Usury Moore of Georgia and Oklahoma resident Leela Van Dusen. Globe is based in Oklahoma City. In 1993, it had more than $310 million of annualized premium in force, the lawsuit states. The health insurance products named in the lawsuit are sold in all 50 states. The case claims there are an estimated 35,000 people who might potentially belong to the class the lawsuit represents. And look, I'm not trying to say it's okay to scam people as long as you're selling clothes or beauty products, but if you're selling a scammy life insurance policy or a supplemental health policy, then it's especially scummy and damaging. Health and beauty products can be dangerous too. And we've seen that with Herbalife and the liver issues unique and the eye infections, you name it, it's probably there. There's just something that rubs me the wrong way, knowing that these insurers supposedly wrongfully canceled policies or quote, induced policyholders to switch to inferior policies that were misrepresented as comparable in quality, end quote. Though this case was in Oklahoma and Torchmark tried to contest it, they settled one in Alabama for $55 million and contested two others in Mississippi and Georgia. I'm not saying they were definitely guilty in all four states, but if there was enough evidence of manipulation in one, well, then I'm pretty sure there'd be more evidence of guilt in another. 
Also, just to briefly note this here, Torchmark used to be called Liberty National. So if you do look into these cases yourself and see that name, that's why. They don't become global for some time. And again, I've got to wonder if all of the name changes are simply escapes. After all, back in 99, people were catching on to their antics and the Orlando Sentinel warned people to stay away from Torchmark and their insurance whenever possible. Their article read, Four lawsuits involving Globe Life and Accident Insurance and United American Insurance, both part of Torchmark Corporation of Birmingham, Alabama, have dredged up testimony that should affect your approach to buying individual health insurance policies. For example, if a new agent calls and wants to replace a policy you own, insist on a point-by-point comparison between the old policy and the new one. Don't go by the first and probably biased comparison the agent offers. Then check with your former agent. The new policy may be inferior, benefiting the insurance company or new agent at your expense. If you have a health problem and an agent offers you a low cost policy, individual not group, something is wrong. The policy won't stay low cost for very long. What's more, the insurer may find excuses to deny your claims. Even if you're in good health, the design of a low cost policy may cause your premiums to soar a few years down the road. Those are among the key issues in the current lawsuits. Lawsuits against Torchmark dragged on and on, and you can find these cases in 2004 and 2006 too. One from 2004 was in Kansas, and the plaintiffs sought to recover under RICO, the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Torchmark seemingly tried to make excuses for itself on their website when the lawsuits were dismissed. They talk about how they're nationally recognized, one of the oldest traditional insurers in the South and the largest life insurer in Alabama. That may be true, but isn't that all the more reason to take these concerns seriously? I haven't run PR for a multi-million dollar company before, but so far I'm not seeing any statements like, we hear your frustrations and we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. Like none of that exists. And hey, I get it. They're a company that's trying to cover their asses and not look guilty. However, it's kind of a bad look when not only were they sued by multiple states for that same thing, but they're still being sued for it to this day. One article released October, 2020 says that Torchmark consistently acts in bad faith. It states, some of the tactics that were highlighted in lawsuits included selling replacement policies that did not actually replace all of the person's coverage. Company agents would convince policyholders that their current coverage would be discontinued at age 65, even when it was guaranteed for life, and then would offer new policies that were not worth as much. Another tactic involved offering low cost policies at rates that quickly shot up. One such case in 1989, a Greenville, Mississippi man bought a policy with an $86 a month teaser rate. Torchmark did not disclose that the rate would immediately go up. And within two years, the rate had more than doubled. They also explained that in the mid eighties, half of all Alabama residents who passed away had a burial policy from Torchmark. No wonder they made so much money when half an entire state's deceased were their customers, holy hell. Apparently though, these burial policies were sold at a higher price to black policyholders. In 2000, a Florida court had to order them to stop collecting premiums on an old burial policy because you know, race-based pricing is fucking disgusting. Another example on the site reads, Alcohol sued Globe Life Accident Insurance Company for the proceeds of a life insurance policy she purchased on her husband and for damages she allegedly suffered because of Globe Life's bad faith in declining to pay the proceeds. Upon investigation of the claim, Globe Life determined that Mrs. Hall answered the fifth question incorrectly. That is, whether Mr. Hall had been treated for cirrhosis within the past 12 months preceding the application. After trial, the court entered judgment on the jury's verdict, awarding Mrs. Hall the amount of the insurance proceeds plus damages for bad faith. There's been even more cases against Globe Life finding any excuse they possibly can to not pay their policyholders claims. Another says that Karen Peters filed a claim when her mother passed away. Globe Life said that her mother hadn't paid the premium, so they refused to pay, even though Karen had a receipt which stated otherwise. It seemed they may have tried to get around this because Karen's mother paid her premium in cash because the policy application had a box check that said CWA or cash with application. Thankfully, Karen Peters won attorney's fees as well as half a million dollars for breach of contract. Again, there's something especially despicable about telling a person whose family member passed away that you just don't care about them, even though it's kind of your job to. I understand that insurance companies have their limits, truly, but their job is to help you at the end of the day. It's places like Globe Life and by extension, American Income Life that give insurance companies a bad name. 
it's hardly a surprise then that they've been rated one of the top 10 worst insurance companies. They discriminate, lie to policyholders, engage in fraudulent activity, and over 50% of Torchmark customers, according to a free advice survey, are very unsatisfied with their treatment. And this is exactly how they were rated. Globe Life and Accident Insurance Company. Extremely satisfied, 0%. Very satisfied, 25%. Somewhat satisfied, 25%. Unsatisfied, 0% very unsatisfied, 50%. United American Insurance Company, extremely satisfied, 29%. Very satisfied, 2%. Somewhat satisfied, 0%. Unsatisfied, 7%. Very unsatisfied, 61%. Prudential, State Farm, Transamerica, other well-known life insurance companies may not be perfect. Bad reviews and bad experiences do happen. But clearly, based on their reviews, the majority of their own customers are not only left just furious, overcharged, and upset, like you name it, they pretty much have that negative feeling. The way American Income Life treats their customers and employees is enough for me to write them off completely. Now, this last portion is normally where I would talk about the numbers and explain why you can't make money with American Income Life. However, they haven't released their income disclosure and I don't know their product costs. So this one is a little hard for me to actually give a fairly accurate estimate. Some sources claim their commission is as high as 50%, but those same sources also say, for newbies and for those who are new in this kind of business, it's a low success guarantee. It would really be of low income potential. They are not even transparent when it comes to their income disclosure statement. And one reason that I don't recommend AI Life is because it would cost you a lot financially, not to mention your starting fees. But even your AI Life business related transactions that you will all pay on your own, no company benefits and no company incentives. Even if people did make good money at American Income, and I doubt they do, it only takes a cursory search to see just how not great this company is. Hell, American Income themselves knows this because they've sued Google in the past in 2012 for unflattering search results. This lawsuit is, it's just hilarious. Like if you don't want unflattering search results, American Income, then maybe don't treat your customers poorly and it won't happen. Pretty sure Google can't help the fact that most people seem to hate you. According to the lawsuit, Google uses a patented PageRank algorithm called the black box algorithm to determine which sites are the best sources of information, according to the lawsuit. American Income Life Insurance said content from two websites, including www.scam.com is prominently featured in web searches for American Income Life Insurance. Those two results falsely assert that American Income Life is a scam, the lawsuit said. The lawsuit was filed against Google directly as well as the unnamed owners of the websites. In a May 20, 2010 letter to Google included with the lawsuit, William J. Braxley, an attorney for American Income Life Insurance, points out the problem and asks Google to move these scam websites to the second page of results. Here's a suggestion. If you don't want your website to be called a scam, then maybe don't be so scammy. I don't think Google can help with that one. Google said they wouldn't take action and that if American Income Life didn't wanna see those results to appear, they should resolve any disputes with the owner of the website in question. Don't get me wrong, Google is not perfect by any means, not even when it comes to which results they display. But in this case, I don't think American Income has a leg to stand on. I tried to figure out how this lawsuit ended, but just looking up American Income and lawsuits leads to so many more of them that it's, it's just overwhelming, honestly. Like how bad is it that American Income has so many lawsuits against their company that it's just hard to keep them straight and ordered and all of this. Anyway, the point is I finally did find a source that states what happened. And they say, in November, 2011, the US Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals sided with Google when a construction firm sued the search engine for posting an anonymous review criticizing the construction firm's work. The district court properly dismissed plaintiff's action because plaintiffs seek to impose liability on Google for content created by a third party, opined the court. Overall, as frustratingly as expected, I don't have anything positive to say about this MLM either. It's another MLM that may work for some people, but fails for countless others. And if this does happen to work for you and you are in that very, very small minority, just remember that you're most likely the exception and not the rule. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like, follow, and subscribe wherever you're listening so you never miss a new upload from me. Thank you again for making it to another Multi-Level Mondays, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.